What's cracking guys, in this video we're celebrating because the channel just hit 10k subscribers and in this video I just thought uh, giving you a short update, uh, telling you where this channel is at, where this channel is heading to, as well as uh, I'm gonna do uh, like a short AMA where I'm gonna answer some of the questions you guys posted over the last couple of days. Uh, so let's start with the with the beginning. My first video was uploaded in March 15th uh, last year, so that's 2020. And obviously uh, back then I did not have a clue that we're gonna have a pandemic. And so it perfectly coincided with the pandemic, at least in Serbia. To be honest here, I I'm not sure I'd be having this YouTube channel if there was uh, if the pandemic did not happen, because it kind of helped me focus and have less distractions because we had a bunch of lockdowns here in Serbia. So th that's a I guess a positive side I see in this in this uh, pandemic. Uh, so it took me a year and a half to uh, get to the 10k uh, mark and to be honest if you asked me two years ago whether I, I, I would have a YouTube channel I'd probably say no and uh, the main takeaway there is I guess uh, many of you I'm fairly sure that many of you can actually start your own YouTube channel I don't think there is something special about it and uh, I strongly believe that in 20 years time uh, many people especially tech savvy people are gonna have some type of a media channel because it's a super va valuable asset that helps you communicate clearly your ideas that help recruiters uh, notice you uh, and that can definitely help you land a dream job so looking at these uh, channel numbers uh, like the views number of subscribers and everything I, I think I think I'm, I'm doing fairly well considering all of the things I was doing aside from this channel so I definitely do not consider myself to be a youtuber so uh, throughout this whole period I was working pretty much full-time uh, at Microsoft uh, I was as a, initially as a software engineer and then as an ML engineer. I was also making a bunch of open source projects and posting them to GitHub. And hopefully you know of some of those. You may find some uh, cool projects uh, there. So I'm gonna just link it somewhere here. I had eight open source projects. I, I wrote a bunch of Medium blogs. I read a bunch of papers, a bunch of books. So the point I'm trying to drive here is that many of the things I've been doing uh, were done uh, privately. It's obviously very time consuming to upload everything to YouTube. As a side note here, I noticed that many of you have not uh, turned on the all notification uh, bell so I encourage you to do that because a lot of cool content is coming on and also some of you do have the all notification bell turned on yet your YouTube notifications are turned off so you're not receiving the notifications so go ahead and fix that I also want to tell you something about where this uh, channel is heading to so first things first uh, some of you may know uh, some of you may not know I, I just landed a job at DeepMind and I'm super happy about it that was my pretty much dream company and so uh, the next video you can expect uh, like me sharing my my journey of how I landed the job there so that's there's gonna be one or two videos uh, aside from that I'm gonna be much more bullish on uh, creating engineering videos so code walkthrough videos something like my Gina AI video or something like uh, the dino video I did and so the reason is the reason I was pushing research so much is because I lack formal education in machine learning so I had to compensate all of that myself and so um, like covering research papers was just my way to kind of learn that and uh, also make it public and help others. In a nutshell, going forward, I'm gonna focus pretty much equally on research papers as well as on the engineering videos. So that's some update on my side. Again, I, I said I do not consider myself a YouTuber. This is just yet another one of my channels where I'm trying to communicate my thoughts, my ideas and help you guys out. So having said that, I share a lots of cool content on, at least I think so, on Twitter and LinkedIn. So I, 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 many of the paper summaries I've done were in a written format and only a subset of those were actually uploaded as a video so do follow me on Twitter and do follow me on LinkedIn finally before I do an AMA uh, I want to make a huge shout out to my patrons uh, they've been uh, supporting me uh, over the last period when I was jobless and I also want to make a huge shout out to the AI Epiphany uh, discord server uh, those guys are super active they're helping each other out so if you have any questions I think the best thing you could do now is join the discord server and ask a question there because uh, there will be somebody that will answer your question obviously even better than I can so the server has some really awesome channels uh, like uh, there is one channel where people are sharing their ML interviewing experiences uh, trying to land a job at whatever ML company we have uh, uh, info uh, channels where you can ask whatever uh, job related question and finally I've got a channel where I'm bringing uh, valuable ML companies and thus sharing with you guys the fresh uh, job uh, openings. Having said that let's let's start the AME. 
<laughs> so the first question is this, uh, congrats and we hope uh, you do a video about how to get internship in machine learning and in other video project ideas for portfolio, please. Okay, so the best thing I think you can do here is be very deliberate in your uh, job search. So find a couple of companies you're super interested in and see, uh, like just check out the projects they are working on, some open source projects they have and consider contributing. So that way you'll get, they'll get some exposure to your abilities and you'll, you'll have an opportunity to show what you know. And basically that's, I think, one of the best ways to, to land the job at a certain company. Um, aside from that, consider uh, quitting a project and open sourcing it in a certain topic that's relevant to that particular company you want to apply for. Uh, also, consider writing a blog uh, where you'll be covering and showing your knowledge about that certain topic that they care about again, or, or just make a video if you're comfortable with the video format. Finally, just connect with the people that work at those companies on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and uh, share with them your content. Don't be spammy, just share some valuable content with them. And also, if you, if you think you're still lacking some knowledge, uh, be very deliberate again and ask them which skill sets do they look for and go ahead and learn exactly those things. So don't be that guy that just goes uh, ahead and learns like a uh, language X, uh, framework Y and te technology Z just because uh, they think it's going to be useful. So be very, be very focused. Okay, second question. Um, can you tell how to approach math in deep learning and some resources, especially for CS grads? Uh, I'll be sharing uh, more advice on this question in the DeepMind video, uh, but for now, let me let me give you some some brief tips. First, a small background story. So I basically had throughout my life a love and hate relationship with mathematics, and that was mainly because of schooling. So once I started self-studying, uh, I I became a lot better at mathematics, and I started loving the the topics. Okay, having said that, uh, I obviously have uh, like a, my journey when it comes to mathematics started in elementary school, then I had high school, and finally I was studying electrical engineering. So I had a bunch. Of of course is there so uh, if you have a similar background there then then, then my best tip is to do the following thing uh, go through mathematics for machine learning book uh, accompany that book with the uh, three blue one browns awesome playlists on linear al algebra calculus etc and finally uh, learn stuff on the fly so as you approach as you as you encounter certain problems some mathematical formula you do not understand go ahead and read a couple blogs and a couple of wikipedia uh, pages uh, and kind of that way you're gonna learn uh, like a lot, believe me. And that's probably a mindset I picked up from my software engineering role. Okay, third question, uh, moral question. How can it be prevented that general advances in AI are being used for morally questionable purposes? Is stopping research altogether like Joseph Redman really the only consequence? So in my honest opinion, there is no way to stop this. Uh, as with any technology, uh, AI can be misused. So instead of burying your head in the sand, let me propose a couple of alternatives. Work on educating the public, and work at a company that uh, is using AI for good. Because just think about it, if you if you just kind of exclude yourself from the whole story, that, that's like you don't exist. So if you're a good positive person and you're engaged, you can only make things better. Uh, fourth question is on impact. Uh, hopefully with a bit of contextual background from DeepMind, which area do you think AI will impact the most in the next five years? So uh, first things first, uh, I'm, I still haven't started working for DeepMind. I'll be starting in December, so that means in a couple months. Uh, but I obviously still have an opinion of uh, which areas are gonna be promising. So I cannot pick a single one. I can pick a, like a number of areas I'm, I'm, I'm personally passionate about. So that's uh, self-supervised learning, that's causality, that's reinforcement learning, uh, that's uh, geometric deep learning, and uh, program synthesis and induction. There's obviously a lot of overlap between those fields, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about all of those. Uh, the reason I haven't mentioned computer vision is because it deals more with perception, whereas the thing we are lacking currently is the cognition part, so that's the reasoning part, and all of these fields uh, like seem to, to hold certain promising uh, like ideas that can lead to us building uh, like, a, like an agent that can actually reason and yeah, be intelligent, I guess. As for the technical question, uh, where do you personally struggle the most with in regards to AI? Uh, I personally, when I focus on whatever topic, I do not have problems nailing it, to be honest. Uh, the problems, I, the, the current problem I'm seeing is because I'm, 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 I'm doing, I have a lot of context switching because I'm doing various subfields. And so I sometimes feel like uh, in a month, I forgot, like even a paper I overviewed on my YouTube channel, I feel like I've, I forgot many things. But then like in five minutes, 10 minutes, I can retrieve the context really, really quickly. And I, I just feel a huge gap between uh, the, the, the stuff I know uh, before 
uh, before investing those 5-10 minutes in, in that topic. Okay, sixth question. Uh, where do you typically find the papers? I usually look at papers with code and send it to preserver. Are there more good sources that you recommend? And same question here, any tips on how to pick the relevant research papers when there are so many uh, of them? So basically my main answer would be Twitter. Uh, go ahead and curate your network. Uh, follow people that are passionate about the same topics you are passionate about and only have only follow those people. So that way you'll get a full immersion. Also by creating this network of people around you, uh, some of them can uh, sometimes uh, DM you and send you the hottest new paper and that's basically like a human recommender system, which is in my opinion still better than, than, than machine learning recommender systems. So I personally do not even scroll, usually don't scroll through the Twitter feed, I just open up certain profiles which I follow and I just check out what those guys and girls are posting. Uh, obviously from time to time I just go and, and scroll through the feed just to add some randomness to the process and maybe uh, pick up on some uh, cool uh, new people I, I've, I've missed out. So for me personally, uh, I'm very curious and I have I don't have a single field I'm interested in. So I follow people from a bunch of different subfields and that's I guess also good for my YouTube channel because there is a lot of diversity. Seventh question is how to read papers fast. Uh, and uh, a simple answer would be there is no there is no wisdom there. Uh, you just have to do it. You have to, to read a bunch of papers and uh, a couple of tips would maybe be read the abstract first. Read, uh, check out the, 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 the figures, the charts, whatever the visualizations you have in the paper and uh, read the conclusion. After you have that, you'll hopefully have some rough idea of what's going on in the paper, of the main ideas, and then you can do a single or a double pass to the paper or even more depending on what you're doing. So for example, when I was implementing some papers like graph attention networks, I think I've read it at least three, four times. And then occasionally I just check out some snippets of the paper and that, that's normal. Another tip would be uh, be comfortable with not understanding stuff. So sometimes you'll have to leave that paper behind even though you did not nail certain concepts and only two or three papers uh, down the line will you actually figure it out. So just be patient and be comfortable with not knowing everything. Uh, eighth question, hi Alexa, your journey to DeepMind is very inspiring to me. What's the biggest piece of advice you have for someone uh, trying to self-study reinforcement learning? And a very short answer here, uh, check out my blog on how to get started with re reinforcement learning. So I, I wrote those blogs such that Alexa from the past would be grateful if I if I have stumbled upon such a resource. Uh, ninth question, as a newcomer to AI ML field, could you please suggest the best place to start as I want to excel in computer vision and NLP fields and want to become a researcher? Your valuable guidance in this matter will be highly appreciated. So basically, uh, I created a series, a couple of blogs and uh, a couple of videos where I basically tell you how to get started with whatever topic or with machine learning in general. So I strongly suggest to check out my Medium uh, like blogs as well as uh, two or three videos I made a while, a while ago. I'm gonna link them down in the description uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, there is not much wisdom there, just don't fall into this uh, decision-making paralysis trap and start working and, and be consistent with your work and you, you'll get there. Avoid trying to, to create uh, the best, the optimal uh, learning path because that's impossible. Just pick one of these. I, I think the, 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 these resources, resources I've shared are good enough and if you just commit to them, you'll nail it. Uh, tenth question. Um, I'm planning to take a gap here between my bachelor's degree and master's degree to fill at least some gaps. I don't feel like college has prepared me for the industry, so just want to upskill in general. Uh, I'd like to know how you approach making your own curriculum, any tips in general would be great too, thanks. So uh, basically again, uh, I think my blogs on learning how to learn and uh, my blogs on uh, how to get started with topic X are an excellent uh, starting point to better understand my th thought processes. Uh, so on a personal note, uh, this whole journey of mine of, uh, cre of creating these curriculums and self-studying started at least 15 years ago. So uh, basically, um, back in high school I was learning human languages and I had to uh, learn those by myself and so I, I slowly started developing my own strategies of how to do it and I shared many of those thoughts in, in those blogs I mentioned. So basically human languages, um, uh, workout, i.e. like physical training and, uh, and working out helped me a lot, like just gain that a different type of willpower uh, and uh, create a program. Uh, Create a, create a goal, uh, create a program and just stick to it and kind of execute all of that. So all of those um, 
like skills slowly, so learning how to learn and discipline and willpower developed over over a course of 15 years, I guess. So now, even though I started in 2018, uh, like learning machine learning, which is pretty recent, I already had a decent background, uh, both from the technical standpoint, and I also made a really strong background in learning how to learn. 11th question, uh, you have so, so many good articles, how did you acquire so much knowledge in the space in what seems uh, like a short time? Again here, at this point of time, I think I have a really strong, uh, like learning how to learn abilities. So, uh, as I said, through learning languages, through uh, working out, I developed all of the necessary ingredients, uh, like uh, setting the goal, making a program, executing. So having that pure willpower, as well as uh, like a bunch of different learning, uh, like tricks, I guess. But also things like a learning how to learn course helped a lot. I definitely think that learning languages had a really, really strong role uh, in developing those necessary cognitive abilities that will later help me uh, learn whatever topic I want, uh, whether it be machine learning, software engineering, finance, whatnot. And finally, 12th and final question. Uh, hi, maybe you could make a video about your journey until today, what's your academic background, how you got into ML, etc. So I'm gonna keep it super brief here. Uh, I basically did uh, like a bachelor in electrical engineering. I dropped out of masters because as I said, I'm a strong, uh, like a proponent of self-education. So I strongly believe that I can create a better program for myself uh, than the best faculties out there like MIT or Stanford. Uh, so, uh, in 2018, I attended this machine learning summer camp organized by Microsoft, and I think that was the, the starting point for me, pretty much. That's it, guys. Uh, let's, let's go to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, if you find uh, these videos useful, uh, consider subscribing, uh, share the videos out with your friends, um, and join the Discord community. Until next time, bye-bye.